Good afternoon everyone. I'm just going to do a uh, quick setup video on our Ultimate Nessus 360. Um, in particular we just wanted to highlight um, how easy it is for us to set up the 360 with the electric actuator which uh, opens up the lid for us electronically. Uh, but people who have been thinking about buying Ultis often ask questions about you know what does the setup look like, how about the 360 awning, is it extra work for that 360 awning. So we find it's fantastic. We've had this one for 18 months now. We've been on heaps of trips with it. Um, we don't mind it at all. Um, I think it's about a 10 minute setup with me doing it by myself, going slow. Um, I'll probably go a little bit slower in this video um, just to you know step through all the exercise. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the stabilizers up first. We've got the new, the new stainless steel, the new generation stabilizers. I'll get the stabilizers done. I'll get the stairs down unlatch, I'll do the actuator, flip it over, get all the canvas out, put the hoops up and then put the poles in and that should be the whole thing done. So that's the plan, let's have, let's get into it. Cheers. All right, so, so I've got the, uh, the new, the new stainless steel legs come with these nice, these nice feet, these great big feet. Makes it much easier to work with the stabilizers. So let's get these legs in place. All right, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Got a special tool for we've got a special tool for those legs, but. Let's get the let's get these legs in place first. Alright. They just slide out, pop the pin out, drop the legs into place. The standard legs work very similarly to this as well. Just these new stainless ones have a great adjuster system in it that makes it much, much easier to uh, level out the ulti. There we go, legs are in place. Now I'll just grab the handle that allows me to, to lock these in place. I've got that up in the nose cone here. There we go. All right. So the way this works, this goes in here. It's got a bit of nylon on it. You just put a bit of pressure on it. Choose the level you want to pin at, pop your pin at, take that off, done. Nice and sturdy, that's much, much easier than uh, the prior generation. Although, lots of people have done the prior generation, 25 years of it, so can't say that the uh, prior generation is that inefficient either, but this is just a little bit easier again. All right, a little bit of pressure there. Pop our pin in, done. One more to do. All right. Actually, that one's already in a good posse. Good. All right, so our legs in place. Now you have to put these stabilizer legs in place because when the bed swings over, it helps reinforce the, the trailer. So these, these stabilizers have to go in place. All right. But the stabilizers also help stop the uh, the camper from uh, moving around when you're walking inside, so they're a good thing. All right, we'll pop our stairs down. There we go, so they just swing down like that. Next thing I gotta do is uh, unlatch the roof. So they got these safety latches on it. There's three of those, one on the back and uh, two on the side. All right. Three safety latches are done. Alrighty, I'll just open up the back door here. There we go. And I'll just turn the actuator on. Good, it's an electronic actuator, so I'll just turn that on. Now here's the cool bit. So I've just got a remote here that comes with the keys. Just press a button and away the lid goes. Now if you have a look as it swings over, you'll actually see the actuator appear 
It actually runs down from the, the roof, runs down to a pivot point down here on the side of the trailer. So as it swings over, you'll just start to see that the actuator comes into view. Just got to tip it over the, uh, the balance point. I'll do that from the top. There we go. Just tip it over the balance point. Here we go. And there you can see, you can see the actuator in position. All right. Makes that part of the job nice and easy. Takes the lid over, locks it into position, stabilizes the holding the camper nice and stable now. Done. So that's the actuator work all done. I'll put the uh, I'll put the remote away. So the next step now is I'm just going to unfold the canvas. So canvas there is held with a with a nice strap. So I'll undo the strap. Just work my way around here. There we go. There's my strap. I'll just tuck the strap neatly around the back here. I like to fold that in half and tuck it in underneath there. Now I'm just going to reach for my canvas. Just going to fold the canvas out. So this is the 360. This is the 360 awning. So just going to pop that out and around. Need to, you do this part so that when you pop inside and put the hoops up, they're just the hoops just swing up inside. Uh, that the canvas is out of the way, it makes it easy to put the hoops up. All right, here we go. Just popping my canvas out. There we go. All right. Looking pretty good there. Might grab my sleeping bag out on here. Might pop the sleeping bag over here. So, just got rid of my sleeping bag there. Just pull the last bit of this canvas out. All right, that's done. Now I'm just gonna pop inside for a sec. Just gonna put the two hoops up. You'll see this canvas stand up as I do that. And then I'll come back outside and do my poles. holes there too ready for to come back to all right let's get some hoops done see you in a minute everybody right so just showing you how the uh, kitchen hoop goes in place so I would have I've uh, spread the canvas outside um, I've come inside the trailer you put your kitchen up first so you've got room to move and then you climb up on the bed and you'll put your bed hoop up so you'll have canvas pressing down on you you just lift the hoop up all right it's got some struts on it that help this process but you're basically just pushing it back um, around the canvas so pull the canvas over the top so I'm just going to do the over the bed hoop and uh, it holds the canvas up that end and the way it works sorry about showing my back but there's two spreader bars that'll hold it in place and you simply put them over the back of the bed back to the pivot point that'll lift up and then you lift it up with the two spreader bars. Now, you push it back in the canvas. Now I just put them down, and then I actually climb into the bed area. And then I just, one at a time, I just take the C-clip, push up onto the center hoop. You clip it in and you push it to the outside. Same with this one, C-clip onto the center hoop. Push it in place. And now the hoop over the bed is fixed in place. That's how you do it. And then in the middle of the trailer, you'll have your, your two spreader bars. On our spreader bars, we've had these helper bars added to both of them to help us out because we're a bit shorter. So helper bars, but the way, the way you put these in place, these are your spreader bars. I lean on the post over here. I actually lean on the hoop to push it back and get my C-clip in place. And then I use my spreader, my uh, helper bar here, and I just push the spreader bar in place. Really simple. That's that helper bars really helped us out. It's the name. You grab the other one. Once the first one's in place, the hoop's actually pushed pretty much into place. So the second one's really easy to get in. C-clip on and just use the helper bar to push it in place and clip it on there. And that's the kitchen hoop done. 
right, so here we are. Inside's done. Last piece of the outside um, is putting the uh, the poles in. Oh, and one other thing, you've got to put a skirt down. So I'll step through that. So I've got those internal hoops done. The spreader bars are up inside. Now it's time to put the poles on for the 360 awning. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I'll grab, I'll grab a couple of those and I'm just going to work my way around here. There's a locking pin for these spreader bars so the wind doesn't blow the awning off the, off the poles. So just putting the locking pin in and each of the spreader bars, sorry, each of the poles just slide into place. There's a receivers for the poles attached to the camper. So I put my safety pin in. And there's a receiver. And you just slide it in. There's a bit of a technique for these poles. I tend to push down in the middle like that when I'm putting them in. I find that that lines the pole up with the receiver really nicely. Okay, safety pin. This one goes in there. So you see, I pull down in the middle there. Clips in really easily. All right, I'll take a couple for a walk with me. I'm gonna do the other side. Okay. So. Just put my pole in. Put my pin in. safety pin, pop it into the receiver, pull down in the middle, click done. Very straightforward. What I love about these is it's, there's no heavy lifting, not a lot of messing around, you don't have to adjust them, they're all just one length, they're all the same length, just grab out a pole, put it in, done. Alright, one around the back here. All right. Safety pins in. Done. All right, I've got, just got four left to do. So we think this is worth worth it, right? 360 awning, it's like a Queenslander house. Big, a big veranda around the outside of our tent. Keeps the sun out, keeps the rain out. We love it. We really love the 360. We're glad we went that way. You know, different strokes of different folks. You know, they do a 180 as well. So, for some people, they're traveling all the time, they're putting it up and down every day. Some folks like the 180 for that, but for us, we do a lot of that sort of traveling as well. But we reckon the 360 is absolutely the bee's knees. So, it helps keeping things cool, helps keeping things dry. All right, and just two poles left to go, and my 360 awning's done. All right. That one with a safety pin. Up it goes. That goes in there. And my last pole. Okay. Put that one in place. All right, so there you have it. All right, so there you have it. That's all up. One last job to do, I did say though. There's a little skirt that goes around the tent and it actually seals off the uh, the body the canvas and the body so if any rain comes in and it hits this it runs down the skirt over the side and out so it keeps the water out of your tent so you definitely want to put your skirt in place so it's pretty straightforward it's just a series of bungee loops you just fold it down bungee the loops down very very easy to do. So I'll just get all those done. And my ones around the back. All right. A couple here at the nose cone. That's done. Two more here at the bed. Just walk around. Okay. 
and the kitchen end down here. Just a couple more for the skirt down here. Bit of a tip for doing the skirt. When you're pulling the bungees down, pull down on the skirt where the skirt's got elastic, is elasticized. Just use the skirt to pull it down. Rather than pulling down on the bungee, it just keeps the pressure off the bungee mounting point. And then just use the last little bit of bungee to get it over the over the hooks. All right, it's just like a tonneau cover on a ute for those that have done that before. So, okay, at that point, everything outside the trailer is set up. For uh, further setup, there's lots more you can do with an ulti. There's lots of options and accessories and things like that. If you know you're going to be in a windy place, then you'll grab your ropes out of here and um, you'll put your ropes in place to hold down your awning. The ropes just come with a nice little carabiner on them. Carabiner just hooks on, hooks onto here, right? And uh, you pin your ropes in. We got a bit of wind where we're camping uh, this weekend, so I'll go ahead and put those on um, afterwards. But you've got tie-down ropes for that. But we're all done outside now. Trailer stable, 360 awnings up. All my poles are in place. Skirts done. Hoops are in place. That's done. And in a separate video, I'll just show you how we pop the. The last thing to do inside here is to pop your uh, mattress up onto your bed, but I'll have a separate video for that. There you go. That's setting up an ulti. We love it. Cheers. Have a great day.